Hey guys, welcome to another Outcrop video. Today we'll have a geology focus and we're going to be looking at the history of the Mediterranean. In this video you'll get to see some nice rocks from uh, Malta and we'll also be talking about this stuff. Basically, we're going to start out by, I guess, plate tectonic, starting off with one continent, all the land masses together in Pangaea. This then breaks up into two subcontinents, Laurasia, where you've got Asia, North America, uh, Europe, and then Gondwana, which is everything else. And basically, these separate, forming an ocean gap in the middle, right where outcrop is there on my shirt. By the way, outcrop.tmail.com, check out the stuff. And this, uh, this, so this rifts open and you get the Tethys Ocean. Gondwana breaks up and Eurasia breaks up itself. And as this happens, Africa, now as we know it, starts to travel north relative um, to Europe. And so you start to have the closing of the Tethys Ocean. So this closing of the Tethys Ocean is happening around the Cretaceous time, which is the same sort of time as the Atlantic was forming, and you have Africa breaking away from South America, and at the same time the relative motion is up with Europe. And so that's sort of the global context of things moving around. And it's not as simple as that sounds because a bit of Africa at the top breaks off early and you get multiple stages of uh, extension and compression all within this sort of block that then becomes the Mediterranean. And we're just going to zoom on a bit. So while closing is happening, you finish the Cretaceous, um, and we're going to keep going right the way to the Oligocene, which is where we see evidence of shallow sea environments. There is also rock record of the oceanic crust dotted around in places, these ophiolites, um, which are very interesting rocks. But we're going to focus on sedimentary rocks that I've actually seen. So while we were in Malta recently, it turned out that basically every rock we saw was a limestone. Many, many fossils. And so here is here's some footage of our time there. We saw sea urchin. Sea urchin, that's what I was wanting to find. Yeah, lots of other things. But this is a shallow sea environment where these rocks were deposited. And you're not allowed to hit the bedrock anywhere in Malta. Here's a, some loose rocks I found. So this is one um, full of these strange fossils that I don't actually know what they are, so I'm just calling them shell fragments. But they, these were everywhere, and there were hundreds and hundreds of them in layers, like meters and meters thick. Um, here's another bit of limestone, this time with dark patches in it and lines. Um, so I think these are related to trace burrows, and here's some, some more obvious trace fossils of these burrows. And now this, this bioturbated area where there's lots of stuff going on is because it's quite a shallow sea environment, and as the sea level fluctuates, when it's deeper you get less, less burrows, less bioturbation, and a sort of pure limestone, and in these shallower environments you get these shell fragments and you get these trace burrows. And the sea level changes here would have been related to global seawater, but also potentially to the Mediterranean's links to the, the global ocean system. Because uh, particularly coming up towards the end of the Oligocene and into the Miocene, which is where we go next, because at this point we have Gondwana or Africa starting to really pinch off the Mediterranean Sea. And as we continue up, we see the, the Mycenaean stage is a particularly interesting and fascinating stage. And that's where the Mediterranean was cut off from the global ocean system. And today's Mediterranean, you have the case of greater evaporation then there is water entering the system by rivers and rainfall. So if it wasn't for the Atlantic today um, topping up the Mediterranean, basically it would dry out. This is in effect what happened during the Mycenaean period. And there's evidence of 
canyons that form and you have these turbidite systems cutting into the basin. But the, the main and most extreme evidence of the Mycenaean salinity crisis is the fact that there are kilometers in places of salt. Yeah, halite and potassium salts and gypsum that all form from the evaporation of water and the salts precipitating. Um, and so here is a few images. A field trip to the Sicily, and we went down Realmont Salt Mine, which is really cool. It's 200 meters underground and it's massive. It basically, there's enough salt there that it'll never stop producing. Um, but there's a good, good paper on the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis by my old tutor, link below. And basically, after this, the Gibraltar Strait opens. You have the infilling of the Mediterranean with water from the Atlantic. The Ice Age then happens, um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and please leave a like or subscribe. And as always, check out outcrop.tmail.com. <laughs> Let's watch that again. <laughs>